Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So I have been under attack recently, and there's a bunch of pastors out there. Uh, they're not actually legitimately pastors. There's some weird cultic fringe, and some of you know how dangerous cults can be, like the Jim Jones cult, for example. Uh, they drank the Kool-Aid and many died. There have been many cults throughout current events, and today where members and people lost their lives and they can be very dangerous like for example Muslim radicals blowing other people up so strange fringes or cults can be very dangerous including Christian church groups so unfortunately there have been a group of cult pastors who have attacked yours truly for a teaching as you may know what I believe in very strongly the King James Bible and dispensationalism so I stand for King James Bible-believing dispensationalism, as you all may know. A lot of you have been changed by those doctrines, and praise the Lord for that, and has helped your life immensely in filtering out wrong doctrines. Now, obviously, Satan does not want truth to continue. So you don't think that Satan will try to attack King James Bible-believing dispensationalism if that has been the truth that opened many people's eyes? So, of course, he's going to attack, right? So, obviously, there have been groups online that have been attacking me. And some of them are actually pastors of churches, which is very dangerous. So, I feel very bad for the people over there. Now, the thing is, is that because I've stood for King James Bible-believing dispensationalism, some of them took advantage online because the Internet is their only haven and power where they can deceive people by using professional graphic arts design and very beautiful pictures and then trying to attack people's lives. So they try to dig up dirt on Bible-believing dispensationalists, try to dig up dirt in their lives, try to dig up dirt on Bible-believing preachers. If they dug up my life, they would try to expose all of that too. What those people want to do is that they want to try to scare people, try to prove that I'm a heretic. Bible-believing preachers are heretics for teaching dispensationalism just because they dig up dirt on people's lives. But those same people, if you dig up their lives, then you could dig up a lot of dirt online. For example, you can dig up characters in the Bible. How many of them can you dig up dirt on their lives? Moses committed murder. David committed adultery. And what's very strange is that these people, they were not killed. Now, some of these cultic pastors, they would try to teach that adulterers should be killed. But one of these cultic pastors who have attacked yours truly and other Bible-believing preachers who stood for dispensationalism, there's this cultic pastor and a group of cultic pastors who have tried to attack dispensationalism, and they claimed that adulterers should be killed, according to the Word of God. But guess what happened? The Lord judged them at the very same week they attacked yours truly on dispensationalism. At the very same week, there's a bunch of these cultic preachers, and for their sake, and out of respect, for their loved ones and family members and friends, I'm not going to name them here, but you guys know who you are. Now, back to this: these cultic pastors who attack dispensationalism, try to dig up dirt on Bible-believing preachers' lives, and what they've tried to do is that they've said, actually, that adulterers should be killed. But guess what God did with them? One of their own pastors in their cultic fringe committed adultery. He was doing stuff with prostitutes, marijuana, and drugs. Gambling probably too. Now what happened is what did they do? They did not kill him. Now do you know why? Because deep down inside their heart they are closet dispensationalists. Now do I teach that the pastor should be killed? No. I believe that any sin can be covered under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and praise God anybody can be forgiven, including that poor pastor who committed the sin. But you know, this is pure hypocrisy among these cultic pastors who try to attack and point out people's flaws on Bible-believing preachers, and they themselves 
have dirt themselves. Now, that's a big problem right here. Now, another thing is that the Lord judged them severely where they are the second largest YouTube channel within their cult. Now, the largest one is still going. And I believe the Lord is allowing that post-trip anti-Semite pastor to continue. And I believe why. Because he wants to try people's hearts to see and to study for themselves that person's arguments as well as Bible-believing dispensationalist argument and how they can determine it. Look at the Bible. That's it. Not looking at other people's lives, but look at the Bible. So I believe their largest YouTube channel, the Lord allowed it to continue because he still has a use for them. But their second largest YouTube channel has been, they lost their pastor. Now, here's another thing, which is not a coincidence. And you guys, you enemies of the Lord know who you are. You had another YouTube pastor who was the second largest channel. And you guys attacked me and other Bible-believing preachers, and your channel got eliminated. When your channel got eliminated, eliminated the next largest YouTube channel, the Lord happened to, to have the pastor right there be exposed for his sin in committing adultery. Now think about this. This happened in the same week that you guys attacked Bible-believing dispensationalism. Now you know what's worse than that? Now, you guys know who you are, but you cultists have been trolling my church and other Bible-believing churches. Now, when you guys try to troll at one particular Bible-believing church in Florida, you know what's going on now with that particular cultic church who trolled a Bible-believing church in Florida? I'll tell you what happened to that cultic church in Florida. There, there so-called pastor, they don't consider him to be a pastor, but their so-called pastor over there is fighting against their own cultic group. So now they got two problems. They had one who messed up in sexual sin problems and drugs, and the other one who's fighting amongst the other ones. Now you got two problems. Now this all happened because you attacked God's ministry. If God's ministry is King James only, Bible-believing dispensationalism, then you guys should think twice before you speak out and try to dig up dirt on people's lives because people can do the same thing in your lives. That's why you cultic pastors and you poor people bound in those cultic pastors' churches have a paranoia of people trolling you online, trying to take up clips of you guys online and try to dig up dirt in your lives. Do you know why? Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man shall sow, that shall he also reap. You know what happened when they did videos attacking yours truly on dispensationalism? I had a good night's sleep. But right now, some of those guys did not have any sleep, and some of them admitted that, those cultic pastors. Hmm. Now, the thing is this, is that this video is trying to show something to poor people deceived by cultic pastors who are post-trib, anti-Semite, and they believe that homosexuals can never get saved. You poor people in those cultic churches, this is what I predict. I don't think that... What's really sad, because I pastored churches for a long time and I've seen people in YouTube for a long time, I don't think that you have the light to see the problem and you're not going to leave the church. You're not going to have the guts to leave the church because you're afraid that you're going to be attacked by your cultic pastor, by fellow people in the cultic church. Now, the thing is this, is that I implore you to at least see the pride, the arrogance, and a bad spirit that they've had in attacking Bible-believing dispensationalism. Now, if we're wrong, of course Let's say, I'm going to be on your side. Let's say King James only Bible-believing dispensationalism is wrong. Then I want to challenge you this. Why don't you stop digging up dirt on people's lives because you start to notice that with your own cultic pastors? Okay? If you can start to forgive them and overlook their faults, I don't understand 
why you would call us wicked heretics who are damned to hell forever when Bible-believing dispensationalist preachers like us have sinned as well. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hmm. Then how are you going to find truth, okay? It's not by digging up dirt in people's lives. You know how you find truth? Look at the Word of God. Look at the Word of God and see if King James only, Bible-believing dispensationalism is right. Now, you might say, no, I don't believe it. Okay, then what I challenge you to do is this. If you have the guts and if you are not bound by some cultic pastor telling you not to watch because, and then he'll mention some ad hominem argument attacking a person's life. Well, you can do the same thing with those cultic pastors too. Let's all do ad hominem arguments, pick on each other. That's not the right way to do it. Study the Bible and see if dispensationalism is right. Well, I looked at the verses. Oh, do you mean the verses that your cultic pastor showed you? You know what the sign of a cult church is? Is when you only look at the point of view of cultic pastors. Not on an independent point of view. Where you're fair on all sides. Now that's how my teachings have been. Is that I tried to look at the opponent's side and debunk them. Now look, here's the thing. Is that I'm all for criticizing false prophets. Sometimes even name calling them. I mean even in the Bible, Nehemiah and Elijah and our Lord Jesus Christ... Call them out, name call them, and criticize them heavily. I'm all for that. But in a way where you find truth, where all you do is pick up dirt on people's lives, that's not the way to do it. And for some of you to pick on some Bible-believing dispensational preachers like Dr. Upman, you pick up, you pick up on his life concerning his life, his marriage life issues, and his children's issues, and then what you do is that you hurt their family by attacking Dr. Ruckman and his family. And then when you cultic pastors have a problem in your church with your own pastor, you say, oh, let's not mention about the problem because we'll hurt his wife and his children and the rest of the family. Why don't you do the same thing, show the same respect to other preachers as well? You guys are something else. And that's extremely sad. That's not a way to do it. Now in this video, I'm not calling people out by certain names in this particular video. I hope that you guys won't make me because I have all the videos recorded. I have contacts. I know of preachers. I have people who used to be a part of your cult. And I have all the evidences and I can easily point out your flaws. But that's not a way to do it. Okay, the best way to do it is to search the scriptures and find out for yourself if the doctrine that I'm teaching or your cultic patch, pastor is teaching or any pastor is teaching is true by the word of God. Now, if you want to check it out for yourself, come on, be fair, have guts, don't be afraid of your cultic church and your cultic pastor. Why don't you have the guts and the courage to watch at least my video called Amazing Dispensational Truth. That's the title of the video. I also want you to look up in my video channel here, look up the playlist, Dispensationalism. If you look at that, it'll give all the answers to your questions, hopefully. Now, go ahead and look it up. I've had people leaving those cult pastors' churches and also uh, who are part of their system online because they studied the verses for themselves. They gave me a fair turn and an argument, as well as their own cultic pastors a fair turn and an argument. You study for yourself. If you refuse to do that, you've got no one to blame but yourself for being in a cultic church, being warped by their system. And some of you, I know some of you are seeing signs of arrogance of, I'm the man of God here. I have the authority. You should listen to me. And it's kind of funny to me that some of these cultic pastors will claim at the beginning, uh, you know, uh, I don't, uh, we'll go by majority vote if we have to, you know, if you choose me to be your pastor. But then later on, when uh, some of you guys who are bound in those cultic churches want to choose a pastor, then these cultic pastors will say, no, I'm the man of God here. You want to call me Rehoboam and you want to follow some other person, you want to follow Aaron and follow their gods, you're in the wrong. What, what is this, man? This is warped thinking right here. 
Now, I'm not afraid of my own members. I have my own members. I tell them to look at the scriptures for themselves. That's why they ended up in my church, because they are independent people who think for themselves and look at the verses for themselves. That's how they ended up in my church. And I'm not even afraid of people who left my church. I'll be sad, I'll be grieved, and I'll pray for them, but I'm not afraid. Do you know why? I know if their heart is right with God and then they're sincere for the Lord, the Lord will show them the truth. So I'm not afraid. Not only that, what do I have to fear? That they're going to debunk me in some argument? Pick up some kind of dirt in my life or something like that? I don't have to be afraid when God is with me and I know that I'm for the truth, for the word of God. So I have no fear. But some of you cultic pastors, I don't know what's in your head right now. All I can plead is to some of you members out there. I'm a very realist person, so I don't think this is going to reach anybody out there. If it reaches any of you out there, especially those of you bound by cultic churches, I'd, it'd be a big blessing to see how you got freed from that and that uh, you go in your own independent path and let the Lord guide your heart without fear what man may say. You know, there's a great verse at Romans 8 that I want to encourage you. If God be for us, who shall stand against us? No one. That's how I stood, and that's how the Lord blessed me and my ministry. And I can thank God that as a Bible-believing pastor, I've got many Bible-believing pastors and Bible-believing churches who support me, who are my friends, and we can serve God together and promote dispensationalism. Those of you guys who attack dispensationalism, I'm going to tell you something. The ones who supported you in those comments are your own members and those who are on the internet who followed you for a while. That's it. Not normal Joes. If there was a normal Joe, then there's probably very few. But I've gotten so many emails and calls, even today and right now, of people who thank me for the King James Bible dispensationalism, how it answered all their questions. I had one person begging me to start some kind of website and that he's, his life was changed by dispensationalism, and he wants to translate them in many different languages, in Indonesian, uh, French, Chinese, some dialects in African, etc. But um, this is just one. I can tell you many. And this happened in the same week that you guys attacked King James Bible-believing dispensationalism. Okay, what's going to happen to me right now is I'm going to have a good night's sleep. You guys can still live in sleepless nights, conscience bothering you, problems going on, and claim that you're being persecuted for righteousness' sake, you cultic pastors out there. Me, myself, I know my conscience, and I know between me and God and in front of people online where God will judge me for lying if I'm lying to you online, I can have peace that as soon as I end this video that God's going to take care of me, that I'm in the will of God, I'm not doing anything wrong. If I'm in the wrong, the Lord will show me. That's it. I don't have, I don't have like a restless conscience on that because it's between me and God. You people online, I love you so much. You souls out there, I love you so much. That's why I've started a church from scratch in the middle of liberal San Francisco Bay Area to try to reach you with King James Bible believing dispensationalism. It has not been very popular and uh, I've stood very small and alone, but you know, the Lord helped me through and he's given me many more friends, family, and loved ones that I couldn't even count. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ.